Dave Stickler, President and CEO of Big River Steel. Nice to see you at the Steel Conference in New York. Glad to be here. Well, I'm going to quote you to start this interview. The status quo is not acceptable at Big River Steel. So what do you mean by that? What we look for as, as a company and part of our DNA is we want to challenge all existing assumptions. I gave an example about you know scheduled maintenance. There's a lot of mills that schedule their maintenance every Wednesday afternoon for four hours. And when I ask our maintenance team why, they say that's the way we've always done it. That's the wrong answer at Big River Steel. We may end up doing it every four hours Wednesday afternoon, but we want to find out what is the optimal duration uh, spacing for maintenance. And quite frankly, it depends on the product offering. Thicker and wider material, you're probably going to have to have earlier maintenance. Thin and narrow, later maintenance. So you're trying to rethink a lot about the industry, and that rethinking has been good for the bottom line. You became profitable very, very quickly. How did you do that? Well, that was our, our second month of operation. We were uh, EBITDA positive. Uh, number one is we've had a very, very safe, successful startup. Number two is the technology supplier, SMS, group out of Germany, a company I've worked with for 20 years installing their equipment around the world, uh, had, had a, certainly had their A-team on site helping with the commissioning, but most importantly, the quality of our workforce. We spent over $10 million training our workers. We hired people that we've previously worked with uh, on other large industrial greenfield projects. The quality of the workforce is what allowed us to be profitable in our second month of operation. And the workforce has to have far more skills than decades ago in the steel industry. I mean, it's, it's almost an entirely different job now. Well, it's, it's interesting that you mention that. When I first started doing this 20 years ago, the steel industry was 80% bronze and 20% brain. Today at Big River, we're 90% brains, 10% brawn. Our best workers are the workers that have the high aptitude for computer joysticks. Everything is automated. Uh, as, as I like to tell people, we have the capability to know as much about what's going on in that mill as GE does with their jet engines that are flying all over the world. We have 50,000 sensors installed in our mill. That really is opening up a series of data that even 10 years ago was unimaginable. And what's your biggest market for the products? Where do you see the real growth? So when we designed this mill, uh, we purposely trademarked the term flex mill. So we're not a mini mill, we're not an integrated mill, we're a flex mill. And the core of that is that we can flex across product offerings. High value added automotive steels, energy related steels for new transformers, rebuilding the grid network, infrastructure type products, energy industry, pipe products, rail car manufacturing. Uh, we can flex across all industries. I'll give you an example. Our uh, business plan in the three short years of our life has changed six or seven times as markets ebb and flow. None of it concerns us because I can't build a mill and spend $1.6 billion building a mill expecting the auto industry to continue on the upward trajectory. I can't expect oil to be at $100 a barrel. We have to have a mill that is able to react to market dynamics. And do you see making future additional investments? Will demand support that? My, my view is, and I've been doing this for 20 years, demand is always there for an efficient producer with a high quality next generation product capability. You know, people have asked me, you know, why do you keep building these mills? Well, because they continue our successful. We'll end it there. Dave Stickler, great speaking with you. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.